everyone, hello again. My name is Jeremy McCandless and welcome to the Living in Faith Everyday Podcast, the Life Podcast. And you've joined us again as we're working through the series I've entitled 66 Books. 66 short podcasts that consider the 66 books of our Bible. And today you've reached the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, the book of the humanity of Jesus Christ. For many, Luke is the most comprehensive and literary of all the Gospel accounts. It is in fact the longest book in the New Testament. Luke is also an accurate historian, a careful writer of quite remarkable ability. And incidentally, no other Gospel account gives such a large place to the woman in its narrative. The author does not identify himself by name. But from the very earliest times, Luke has been universally recognised as the author. The Gospel of Luke was written by a well-educated man. His prologue, in the first four verses of chapter 1, is regarded by many as one of the most perfect pieces of classical Greek writing in the New Testament. It seems certain that Luke was a Gentile, and therefore the only New Testament writer who was not a Jew. Early records suggest that he was born in Antioch in modern-day Syria, though at the time of Paul's missionary journey he seemed to have lived in Philippi in the north of present-day Greece. By profession Luke was a doctor, we are told that in Colossians 4.4, but he also was a skilled historian. He carefully dates the beginning of his story according to well-known events, And in his prologue he says this, Many have written a narrative of the life of the ministry of Christ. Notice he's referring here to written sources, and he calls these sources eyewitnesses to the ministry of the word. The Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts were written together at the same time, and together they form a continuous record of the origins of Christianity, from the birth of its founder, Jesus Christ to the arrival of the great missionary in Rome, Paul. Both books were written for a man named Theopolis, who from the title by which he is addressed appeared to have been a person of some importance, possibly a high-ranking official in the Roman government. Of the four Gospel accounts, Luke is the longest and most orderly. It covers more of the life of Jesus than any other of the Gospel accounts. Luke gathered and arranged his material with a definite purpose in mind, and with much skill he has produced a book that contains more of the well-known stories of Jesus and his ministry than any other. So who was it written to? Who were the recipients? Well, no one knows for certain when the Gospel of Luke was written. Many have concluded that Luke probably wrote his Gospel towards the end of Paul's imprisonment, That was around 59 AD. Luke addresses his book, as I said, to the most excellent Theophilus. The inscription, most excellent, is an official title, but beyond that nothing really is known about Theophilus. He was no doubt a believer who felt he needed instruction and confirmation. The book being written in classical Greek style also implies that it was meant for a wider circulation. From the content we can see that it was written for Gentiles in general and particularly those of Greek culture. The genealogy of Christ is traced to Adam, not to Abraham. Gentile words are used in place of Jewish words. For example, teacher is used rather than rabbi, and lawyer is used rather than the term scribe, which is used in Matthew and Mark. Jewish customs and geography, when they appear, are explained which creates a beautiful symmetry across these three gospel accounts when we understand that Matthew wrote primarily to Jews, Mark wrote to the Romans, and here Luke writes to the Greeks. So what is the message of the book? Well, the message of Luke is Jesus Christ is the Son of Man. Luke presents Jesus Christ as the perfect human and the ideal man, whilst at the same time not minimizing Jesus' deity 
or his suffering, but he chooses to put focus on the humanity of Jesus, showing him as Son of Man as well as Son of God. Luke puts Jesus in the context of history more than any other Gospel writer. The genealogy at the opening of the book traces Jesus' lineage to Adam. Matthew develops the line back to Abraham and then stops because he was writing to Jews about their Messiah. But Luke traces Jesus' lineage to Adam because he's writing to Gentiles about the Son of Man. And his lineage emphasizes human descent right back to the very beginning of time, not focusing on the royal line like Matthew. Luke is alone in the Gospel writers in recording Jesus' human growth and development. We are shown that he was subject to his parents. We're told this in Luke 2.52. And throughout the book, Jesus is seen to have feelings and sympathies, and both the powers and the physical weaknesses of a human man. He is seen to rejoice. He is seen to weep. The message of this book is Jesus is the Son of Man who has come to save the lost, to die and be raised and, and at the same time then commission his disciples to preach the gospel of the good news of the forgiveness of sins. In writing his account, Luke was concerned with more than providing a record of historical details. Although a great historian, Luke in writing his account was concerned with more than providing a record of historical details. He selects and presents his material in a way that defends and promotes Christianity. He wants to show that God in his love had a plan for a sinful humanity and in accordance with that plan Jesus came as Saviour and that those who believed in Jesus received that promised salvation and then they should spread that message of salvation worldwide. The salvation that Luke talks about is shown that one that is brought and given for people everywhere, regardless of race. Just as there's no distinction on the basis of race or religion, so there's no distinction on the basis of social class either. Luke illustrates this point by showing that often the socially respectable miss out on salvation, but the socially despised and disadvantaged receive it. In developing his theme, Luke draws attention to the various kinds of socially disadvantaged people of that day, yet people who still are seen to receive God's blessing. Among those he covers are slaves, what he calls aliens, refugees in the land, the poor, and even for that time focusing particularly on women, in particular widows, mentioned four times in this Gospel account. From a structural point of view, there is a sense in which Matthew, Mark and Luke all have a similar structure. Once it gets into the ministry phase, each begins with the temptation and baptism of Jesus and they all record his great Galilean ministry. Of course, they all end with the crucifixion and resurrection, but the literary structure of Luke, like Matthew and Mark, although topical, is also geographical. Matthew and Mark devote much material to the Galilean ministry, but only give a very short space for his Christ's journey from Galilee to Jerusalem. In contrast, Luke spends ten chapters chronicalizing that trip, the longest single part of his Gospel account. So the, the Gospel of Luke for many divides into six neat sections. The preface, just the first four verses of chapter 1, and then the second section, which runs from 1 verse 5 to 4 verse 13, shows the preparation for Jesus as his role for the Son of Man. Then from chapter 4, 14 to 9, 50, we see the Galilean ministry of Christ as the Son of Man of work. And then those 10 chapters I mentioned, from 9 through to 19, we see the journey to Jerusalem of the, of the Son of Man, doing miracles along the way and teaching his disciples. And then from 19 to 21, we see him arise in Jerusalem and there's a short period of ministry described. And then from chapter 2 to the end of the book, we of course see the suffering, the death and the resurrection of Jesus as the Son of Man. So why was this book written? What was its purpose? 
Well, one purpose of Luke is to confirm and verify the true record of the life of Jesus Christ, especially to Gentile believers. Luke wrote that Theophilus and other Gentile believers, that they might know the certainty of these things in which they were being instructed by his narrative. In confirming the facts about Jesus, Luke portrays him as the Son of God who became the Son of Man. Luke, as I said, wrote to Greeks. The Greek ideal of perfect humanity differed from that of the Romans. The Romans felt that it was their mission to govern. The Greeks, however, felt it was their purpose to educate and to elevate people in an attempt to almost reach a perfect man status. The ideal to the Romans was military glory and governmental authority, but for the Greeks it was wisdom, wisdom and beauty, and Luke wants to confirm the record in this way and to straighten their faith. Another purpose of Luke is to show that Christianity was not a politically subversive sect. The Gospel of Luke is volume one of the two volume set that Luke wrote. Luke wrote Volume 2, Acts, to defend Christianity from the political charges that were being made against it. Perhaps this is part of what is going on here, even in, in the Gospel of Luke. Interestingly, he's the only Gospel writer who records all three of Pilate's acknowledgments of Christ's innocence. So in summary, we can say Luke presents Jesus as the Son of Man, the one who came to seek and to save the lost, to die and be raised, and then commission his disciples to preach the forgiveness of sin. He did this in order to confirm the record and thus help support and confirm the faith of Gentile believers. The followers of the Son of Man should like him also be out there seeking to save those who are lost. Thank you.